they think that everything's a scam and they really, really have to find something to be for real. And so I felt like if I brought it in front of them and did it with them, that they would be more inclined to follow through with it. Right on. All right. So more of a local presence. I see what with you. What did you say? I said, yeah, to build more of a local presence and it looks like you have your kids with you. Yeah. <laughs> My boyfriend's kids. Oh, what's up? Hey, guys. <laughs> cool. And then is there anyone else on? Yeah. It's like some feedback that had thoughts on why they want to build their fit club. Hey, yeah. Um, I wanted to do it. We, we don't really have um, really any kind of like community, fit community, like even like really classes. Um, I live in a really small town. And um, yeah, I think building that community up and then also showing people, because I think P90X and Insanity, when you hear those, a lot of people are really intimidated. And like showing people that like you can you can get through it you can get through it you can take breaks and you can get through it and that it's a, it's you don't have to like buy this whole system like you can get a sample of it and realize you can do it. Awesome. Now, Rachel, do you have a mic? Yeah, I'm, I mean I'm, not a mic. I'm sorry, a, a video camera. Yeah, it's on my phone, so I don't really oh. know what I'm doing. <laughs> okay, that's all good. I just wanted to be able to see. I'm pretty sure I know who, who you are. I just you get. We have such a big, awesome team. It's hard for me to keep everybody straight. Well, good. So um, what reason why I want to ask everybody is so we can all understand everybody's different wants and needs for like, or what their hopes are for running a fit club and what you're more than likely going to obtain from doing that or what you're going to receive from whether it's giving back to your community or just holding yourself accountable to staying more fit. Um, or it's a way to meet network with people to build your beach body business. Has anyone here? Oh, there we are. Has anyone here um, ran a? Um, oh, you you already did have your. Okay, I remember you did have your camera on. Do has anyone ever started a, a fit club before? No. So we have a bunch of firsts for everybody in it that they'd like to. Well, great. Well, the first step, obviously, I'll, I'll go over like what the needs are and how to do it. I mean, that's pretty obvious to everybody. And then we'll just talk about kind of like little tricks and trades or uh, mandatory things you need to do to run a successful fit club. So obviously you need a space. Um, a few places you can go for a free space is your work. If you currently are employed, your human resources or your owner of a, of a company, more than likely, they're all going to say yes to uh, allowing you to come in and putting in a DVD or doing a workout on demand. So I never had anyone say no to doing the workout live like that. Uh, you might have, if you're a certified instructor, you might have some people wanting this, you know, like, oh, are you doing it? Are you going to be the one leading the class? You know, are you insured? Things like that. Just, you know, the legalities of things. But if you're just pressing play, I've never run into any like red tape of people going like, ah, oh, I don't know about that. You know, I don't know if you can use my space. I don't want to be held liable for an injury or anything like that. When I started the club, I did it in my basement. Another option Katie just brought up is you can host a fit club just out of your own house. If you've got, if you've got a, a large space or backyard or garage, anywhere that can, a fit club doesn't have to be a huge group. A fit club can be you and your friend. Um, and, and coming over for, for a workout. So uh, once you have the space, of course, then it's about getting the word out. What I'd recommend doing is – oh, hold on one second. Um, Katie has more options for me to do on my call. What's that? Church? Church is really good one to do because um, they like that. And plus, it's a great way for people to give out to the community. Churches are like, yeah, you know, brings people into their church. So I did – one in Pittsburgh at a church for about four months. Doesn't matter what religion, doesn't matter, you know, what, whatever it is, churches are always happy to just have people come in and it doesn't have to be religious, right? They usually just, you know, here's a space. It's not like you have to go through a chapel or, or uh, read out of the Quran or the Bible or what have you uh, before entering the Fit Club, right? And then another great place is community centers. So I like to go to, uh, low and not just like a not like a franchise gym i've never had any luck at a franchise gym like a gold's gym or la fitness just because like I said, there's too much red tape but a local community gym especially if you live in the neighborhood are will be uh, 
really happy to have you come in there because they are a community uh, facility. Um, they allow their people who live in there and you have to show proof of address that you live in that community and they'll be happy to either, you know, rent out a space to you at a discounted price or, or maybe they have one for free just to let you do a group workout. Are you thinking there's, does anyone have any more suggestions on where you could host a fit club? And Lauren Knight um, in Arkansas, um, she was top 10 a couple of years back. She um, has done it just outdoors when you like, now that we can stream the workouts, you know, you can really do it anywhere now. And, and your 4G connection is enough, plenty enough to stream high def. Um, that would be really cool to just do that like out on the beach or out in the mountains or, I mean, I really, I mean, I went to scout camp and I was in the middle of nowhere, Florida, and I was streaming the NBA playoffs on my little tent, you know, just using 4G speed. So, I, so there's really nowhere that I'm familiar with, unless maybe you're like up in the Northwest Rocky Mountains that doesn't have reliable cell phone connection to stream um, your, your workouts. So I think an outdoor one would be really cool. For you techie people, you know, you just get an adapter that plugs into your cell phone and then it has like the free, the, the sound and then the video. And you just plug that into a TV and it doesn't have to be like super high def, but it gets the job done. Um, and of course, if you're group certified, then you can teach one yourself, which is a lot of fun. But the thing I found about um, on that note about being group certified, thing that I found is it doesn't make or break your fit club. People like what duplicates and what duplicates is what this business is about. And you as a group instructor, or if you wanted to become one, doesn't necessarily make it like, oh, now everyone's going to show up to this fit club and I'm going to build a class of 15, 20 people and they're going to sign up as coaches. Um, actually, it, it kind of backfires in a way because people show up and they want to be a part of the group fitness experience and they depend and love that class, which is a great healthy thing. But what I found was many of them were like, well, I'm not into DVDs. I'm not into at-home workouts. I'm not into that, but I'm definitely into this fit club. So it's that other demographic, right, that fit in the gym goers, that fits in the group fitness that I found. So I, I, what, this is the, my, my truth is that I found whether it's a, a group instructor or DVD, people are going to show up because they want to be a part of the group atmosphere. Although DVDs are nice when you're doing them because people are like, oh, I'm doing them at the fit club. I can buy this from you and, or I can stream it too and become a coach or a, a club member or, or, or what have you. And it makes it easier to transition into, um, into that. Hey, what's up, Michelle? So does she have audio? No, looks like she's froze. Oh, okay. Um, let's see here. Let's see. We covered that. Any other suggestions for spaces or places? I think we kind of covered every, every place. Uh, next thing is, is consistency. Once you get a space going and you, you have a set time, it's about consistency. Imagine if you are a group instructor for Les Mills Pump and a gym hired you and your paycheck depends upon it and they're going to pay you, you know, $30 or $45, whatever the class pays regardless if anyone's there or not. Um, you know, you get paid as a group instructor, but this is fit club. So your time is valuable. And what I've learned over the years is, is, you know, I'm doing this for the community. I always have to have that in mind that I'm doing it for people in the community and I shouldn't expect anything in return because it can be very, um, well, it's just one day a week. Don't do anything more than that because then you become a group instructor and you're trying to charge $10 a class or what have you. And that's not very much fun. But we're, even lucrative at all it's like a waste of time so so it's all about doing it for free and for the community once you are consistent with that long enough people will start showing um are you recording? yeah so i'm recording it now the time is time slots i've failed with is is i've, I've been a full-time coach for so long i've forgotten how people have jobs and responsibilities and stuff so, like, it has to be after 7 o'clock. Otherwise, it just doesn't – people can't make it. Yeah, Katie says hers was always at 7. 
I just successfully ran one here in Clearwater, Florida, and it was at 730, and then they were overcharging us, um, like $50 a class, and then I was like, well, we need to go elsewhere. We went elsewhere, uh, but they only had a six o'clock, I believe, time, and so well, we had to take it. We took the six o'clock time, and it was just like everyone that was coming to our 730 class, the majority of them just couldn't make it to the six o'clock. So that hour and a half difference is literally a make or break on a fit club. Um, now there could be niches like uh, maybe like a mom's club, you know, where, where they're all full-time moms and they're at home and you can do something like that in your neighborhood. But chances are, you know, to get people showing up, I found that set anytime after seven is fantastic. Even later, you know, even like a nine o'clock class, I think I did in the summertime in Santa Monica, that was, that was quite um, successful. Um, but the, back to the consistency. So what happens is you're not going to, it's kind of like beach body, you know, it's all in the follow-up. Everything you do is within the follow-up. So if you're inviting people out to your fit club, here's how it's going to go. It's hi, I'm a beach. You meet someone in the grocery store at your church. Yeah, I'm a beach ready coach. Cool. And the natural, and this is what I love about fit club. The natural tendencies, you have a segue, you have something to end the conversation off and invite you can extend them to do something call the action by saying oh I do a fit club would you like to come to fit club oh I'm sorry I'm speaking too loud Katie says lower my voice so um, uh, I, my brain's gonna explode trying to lower my voice I can't do it so so the follow-up <laughs> <laughs> it's hard <laughs> so so the follow-up is um is key because you're going to invite these people they're going to add them on facebook you got to keep inviting them to the fit club and when they start show they'll start showing up i mean when they show once is what i meant to say they'll continually show up to that fit club uh, and then the uh, last thing about consistency is you have to be there regardless. It's not going to be easy to build it at first. And then sometimes it's just going to be you and your husband, right, Kristen? And could just be you too. Well, well you still got to get your work in, so get it in. And, it, and if no one shows you, you're still there. And I guarantee you, because this just happened to me, is our 6.30 or 6 o'clock time fizzed out um, is – uh, we're picking it back up just so no one can. Uh, is people will start showing up. I had I was out I was out of town, but the Fit Club died, and then someone I invited like three months ago was like, "Hey, I'm here at the Fit Club. Where is everybody?" And you're like extremely embarrassed because you just wasted somebody's time. And the fit club wasn't there. So you need to treat it very professionally, even when people don't show, because there will be a time when people do show. Um, numbers thing is when one person shows up, uh, I like to make them feel special. It's just like your coaching business. You've got one person feel special and that they're there and, and just have a killer good workout and, and invite them next week. Because it seems like about the four to five people other than yourself that start coming, that multiplies into 10, 15, because, you know, they bring a friend, and they, it's just like, like our business. Um, but it, you got to break that um, number, break that three, four, five group, because not the same people will come every week. So. Can I tell you about my experience? Yeah, yeah. Kay's, Kay's going to tell you about her experience. I'm just going to hop out for a second. Um, so back in like 2011, um, we had a fit club and it was at, we did so many different, I mean, it's like trial and error city. Like we did a church where they had a basketball court that we did it there. We did a community center where it was just like this living room. Um, so at first it was like the first tip I have for you guys is just to promote it like you're promoting like a store opening so you're doing a lot of media i guess like before it even starts so if there's like a local starbucks or a local grocery store that you're putting bulletin boards like you're really just like amping things up and then doing contests um to have people show up and then bring a friend so at the time you know it was me nikki and melanie we didn't have any money like really no money but we would do giveaways um, or drawings for like a Shakeology shaker cup. So I think they're like 20 bucks for six of them. I don't know if they still do that because um, they keep changing the cups. But 
we would do like a shaker cup with a packet of Shakeology and it would just be a drawing. So like if someone brought one guest or if they brought two guests, whatever it was, sometimes it would be the person that brought the most guests or sometimes it would be just like a, you know, put their tickets in a raffle or something like that. Um, but going back to like promoting it before it happens, you know, making it exciting, making it like, like for us, it was basically at the community center. It was like a chance for the moms to get together and not, you know, the dads were at home with their kids and it was, you know, even though you're working out, it was their one opportunity during the week to have that like girl time. So we try to like blast music, you know, when they come in and like make it fun and then have, um, do like a 30 minute or at the most a 45 minute workout. So there was time before and after the workout for them to talk and visit with each other and get to know one another. And that was really, really, really important. Um, because Melanie, I don't know, you guys probably don't know her coaches, but she had a couple coaches that lived in the community center and to see the growth from like day one of it would just be us to then them becoming friends. And then when everyone was friends, then it was just a natural progression for them to become coaches because they were like, I want to be a part of the club. So that kind of takes me to the next thing I want to tell you guys. And by the way, I don't know if you can see Winston is going like buck wild. <laughs> She's like, has to be center of attention. So um, if you can do it at like a community center or a church or somewhere where you have Wi-Fi access or a hotspot, bring your laptop or some way for you to like a sign up sheet or something where you can get their information and help them create a team beach body out with you as their coach, or if you're doing it with a couple coaches where you guys have a wheel where, you know, kind of goes like, okay, you get this one, you get this one. Winston. Um, because if you don't have them create the account, then it's a missed opportunity. So the point of a fit club is to get them introduced to the products. They can try different workouts. You could do a Shakeology, you know, just take one packet. And, you know, those, like, cute little um, mouthwash cups or whatever. You can get them at Walmart. <clears throat> you can make one packet into, like, ten samples. So it's just to introduce them to it, to have that weekly accountability. And then – as you're talking to them and getting to know them to get them into a challenge pack and then ultimately to become a coach. Not everyone's going to do that, but you have to run your fit club. Like, like Jay was saying, it's for the community. It's for free, but you have to be business minded about it and not let people fall through the cracks. So people would come in, fill out, you have to do, um, what is that called? Liability waiver and sign in on a sign up sheet if they were new you know asking them questions like have they ever heard of Beachbody I wouldn't try to rush the conversation but you know just make it like you're helping them okay that's awesome let me get you set up with a free account there's so many tools where you can track your progress you can track your measurements once you do that you'll be plugged into any local events that we do if there's any promotions you know I'll make sure that I email you about them so I always would position it like I'm doing them a favor by making sure that they stay connected. And then um, the other thing that we did was have a Facebook group for the fit club. So anyone new coming in, they would get added into that group because you want to create the buzz around it, you know? So for example, there was one girl, actually, I don't know if you guys know Natalie Price. She's like now a five-star diamond, but like she would come to fit club. And then if she wasn't there, then people would be on the message on the Facebook group group saying, Natalie, we missed you this week. You know, how are the kids? Um, you know, were you sick? What's going on? So it created an awesome community. So that's really, to me, the best part about it was just them coming together. And then, you know, then it's like, they basically are part of the Beachbody family. Does that make sense to everybody? I have some more tips that I'm trying to remember, but doing like a cardio workout where you don't need weights is good. You know, something where you don't need a lot of equipment. Um, this light really like showcases my bass. <laughs> I have the biggest dark circles ever since Summit. Um, what else did I think of? It's been so long since I've done one, but honestly, I feel like that was one of the biggest catalysts for building a local business when I was still trying to get my blog up and running and just like public accountability. So 
you know, everything's like perception. So even if say nobody comes to your fit club, instead of being like, Oh man, this sucks. Like making it into like a fun picture, like that you're still you know, out there. You're still doing your workout. You're staying consistent. And then it was probably like a month of us being pretty much just us and like trying to get our siblings and our parents to come out and work out with us before people started coming. And then the cool thing was after six months, um, it became something where we had to expand our space because there were so many people that were coming. So it, that's a good problem to have, but it all comes back to consistency. Um, and then the other thing that I recommend that you guys do, if you're anything like me, I get so overwhelmed. Like if I have to follow a schedule, so week after week, if you're in charge of a fit club, it just can be exhausting, honestly. So having a local coach, um, with you that, okay, you take this week, I'll take this week, or, you know, you both go and it kind of divides the work. And then if there's a week where you're just like, I really can't make it this week, then you don't have to cancel the fit club. Cool. Is there anything you want to add to that? Oh, that was really good. Thanks. Yeah, no, fit club's fun. I mean, at this point in my, in where I am, it doesn't benefit me unless I loved it. Like Erica Lavars loves people and socializing and being around but um now my sweet spot is all online so like i do and i've told you guys this have something googleable that you're building while you're doing your warm market or while you're building your local because if you're doing a fit club you're still time for money but if you're building your blog or your youtube then you get into that awesome position of exponential growth where you have people emailing you that you're like, Oh, how'd you find me? So are you guys, is that the reason for like wanting, I didn't hear what you told Jay, but what's the reason for wanting to do a fit club? Is it to grow, like grow your business? It's not just like, Oh, I want to have a fun hangout type thing. Um, I think I'd like to hang out too, but like it's mostly just to grow the business. Um, like, I want to do it just to hang out, <laughs> <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> well, like I said, I mean, so many moms just loved having that. Yeah, <laughs> that would be yeah. I mean, it's nice to get out of the house, but, like, the I wouldn't be able to The quietest moment of their day but... was, like, having Shanti yell at them in a room full of women. <laughs> yeah. so funny, but... Yeah, that's cool that you guys want to do it. I mean, my motto always with Fit Club is like free, free, free. So like when you go to talk to places, you're, don't say it's for my business. Say, you know, yeah. I want to, my passion is helping people um, get healthy and fit. And I want to offer this free resource. And I would love it if you could help me with, I just need a space where I can put in a DVD or, you know, use my computer. So most places are pretty open to it. We had some places where we had to pay and that just like stressed me out. It was better to do like the churches for free. Okay. Are you guys I have a question? Yeah. Um, there's already a fit club in my town. Is, mm -hmm. would like, is that bad etiquette to start another one? No, because even like, if I think about Pittsburgh, where our fit club was, we had one that was like more in the South side of town. There was one that was like where Melanie lives, which is Mars PA, which is like 30 minutes, you know, there's different areas. So yeah. I'm imagining even if you were in the same area that you would offer it on a different day, but yeah. ideally that you're in the slightly different area of town and then you can cross promote one another's fit club you know so if you have a client or a potential you know a prospect that lives closer to that fit club what we would do is you know I would contact whoever ran that fit club hey I have so-and-so coming out you know can you take care of them help make sure okay. that they feel welcome and then if they have people you do the same so you're not stealing anyone's customers right. you guys are just like supporting one another which works out really well and it takes the pressure off and then that person doesn't have to drive all the way you know however far yeah definitely and the other thing if you do have one in your town already go check it out and just say you know hey I'm a coach I really appreciate you, that you're hosting this I would love to pick your brain you know I'm thinking about starting one in whatever area uh, I, I would love to partner up and just like you know, help each other. 
And then I, I would imagine most coaches would be pretty receptive to that, but, you know, just make it like you're putting in more of the work to help them and that you admire whatever it was that they did. Pay lots of compliments. That always yeah. takes you really far. Did you guys have any other like specific fit club questions? I can let um, Jay talk some more, but I'm just trying to remember like wh everything that we did. You know, like I about the waiver. Mm -hmm. So like Jay said something about like there's a waiver that we have to have them sign. Is that something that we just keep or are we supposed to turn that into Beachbody or what is up with that waiver? Wait, you're like breaking up. I heard recent, some, say it again. So Jay said something about there's like a waiver that you're supposed to have people sign. What do you do with that waiver once they sign it? Do you just keep it or do we send that to Beachbody? Um, no, we just kept it. We just hole punched it and put it in a binder. So if it was somebody um, that was coming week after week, we just, you know, have you signed a waiver? Okay, yeah, we have it on file. Honestly, if someone got hurt, I don't think the waiver would really do much good. Like, um, but I will say I've never had a problem. Nobody has ever sued me or gotten hurt or like whatever. Like, it just hasn't been an issue. At the beginning of the workout, I always make sure to say, you know, okay, the warning is going to come up, especially if it's a Shanti workout. You know, do what you feel comfortable doing. Nobody's judging you. I probably have the worst cardio endurance of anybody. So. I would just, you know, make sure that they know not to push the limits and yeah, just like hole punch it, keep it in a folder, or binder, or whatever. Okay, thanks. That's also like a great way to just make sure you're keeping track of who's coming and that they have, you know, they're signed up with an account. Do you have any tips? That was really good. <laughs> The other thing too, I mean, not to get too far ahead of ourselves, but you can use Fit Club, um, you know, as like, we had people that would buy a challenge pack and then they would come, you know, and you're doing different workouts. So it's a nice way for them to break that up. But then also you're seeing them each week. So, you know, asking like, how, how is the meal planning going? What questions do you have? You have that one-on-one -on -one time, even if it's five minutes to just check in. Does Roxy do that? <laughs> oh my goodness. He's so loud. He's like the most vocal dog. Yeah. Um, crazy. Now I'm like distracted. Yeah. Oh, what I was going to say was uh, turning it into like almost like a business opportunity event, away. like either before or after the workout. And not that it has to be one of those dorky like 1980s network marketing meetings, but um, basically like Melanie, she had like a couple slides and we would just say, we're Beachbody coaches, you know, we're people that were customers first, fell in love with our results and just the whole process, the company, and we're able to then turn that into a business where we're helping people. So, and, you know, just give them like a two minute spiel of what coaching is all about. And then to like invite them to join you if they so desire, but you're at least planting the seeds. So it's a great, you know, they can see you look you in the eye, see that you're not being creepy about it, or it's like a scam. They see you every <laughs> So that was like, seriously, I think we turned like 30 people in the coaches from our fit club up in Mars. It was crazy. And then Mars those is a like, good area for that. Yeah. Just yeah. funny up there. Yeah. <laughs> like a lot of, a lot of housewives. <laughs> so yeah, if you can get yeah. into a community center with like housewives, that's like money spot. Cause yeah, <laughs> they need that break. Awesome. Yeah. What did we do in Santa Monica that was like good? Well, it was just a corporate. Yeah, I mean, um, just trying to think of anything else. We used Facebook. I would like blog about the Fit Club. You know, just any way that you can put it out there. We made a YouTube video like, "What is a Fit Club?" It just gives you more, and it gives you more content to post on a weekly basis because your your whole goal is to put out content. You know, yeah, you're, gonna, you're not going to build an empire <laughs> on Fit Club. It's going to help you build it. You and like, I think just like the pictures, like when you're posting, even if it's five people working out together, just posting that good. picture. Um, when other people see that, then it's no longer scary what you're doing. It's more like, like, oh, I should get in on that. Like, I'm missing out. So that was, I think, too, 
just a confidence builder for you guys. Like when you're talking to people, yeah, you might mess it up the first time you talk about coaching or the first time you try to introduce a workout, but it just builds your confidence. So when you are at summit and you have to get on stage and speak or leading team calls, you just have more confidence in doing those things. So it was really good for that. Kristen, I think this is the first time I've seen you on a zoom. Am I like, is it? Me? Yeah. No, not you. Yeah. Oh, me? Roxy. Yeah. Roxy. Yeah, I think it is. <laughs> Roxy's first time, too. Was Roxy on? Yeah. I've seen Roxy on here before, I think. Roxy. <laughs> oh, she's camera shy. Oh, it looks like she's like Winston, toys everywhere. <laughs> she just sits there all the time. <laughs> oh, gosh, so cute. So sweet. All right. Well, any other questions or? Yeah, I did have a question. Um, that was helpful. A lot of the so we we kind of had our own uh, difficulties in terms of uh, with the Fit Club. Like we've got a, a, <laughs> a complex, so we don't have a lot of space. We can't you know, go to a garage or anything. Uh, so we've been doing it in our fitness room. There's a lot of workout equipment in there, so there's limited space. Um, but there's that's where the TVs are. Mm -hmm. The only alternative would be like the bocce ball court, which there's lots of space, but there's no televisions. Uh, yeah, so we don't have a projector. So I'm mm -hmm. uh, just kind of um, wondering is, I don't know, what would you do in a situation? I mean, would you have everyone huddle on the laptop? Is that acceptable? Like, you think that would deter people? Um, I don't think that would be, like, ideal. But if you knew the workout, so if you have the laptop and then you're at the front kind of leading everybody – um, because at the end of the day, it is a free workout, you know, so at least as long as they could see, I think it's fine. We've, I've used my laptop and just, you know, when it was a smaller group, um, the other thing, this is so random, but for, we couldn't afford a projector when we started. So we basically posted on Facebook, Hey, does anyone have a projector that we could borrow? And like literally through the grapevine, it was like somebody's mom had one. <laughs> like just random like five levels away from me basically um, and they let us borrow it week after week I'm they were so generous but I don't know if that helps you at all but sometimes yeah, like we have, yeah my we have another space to do it too, but it's more like we're worried about like the tv the tv space so like asking about a projector is a good idea yeah and then you don't even need a screen for it i mean but the only thing with using a projector is you need a darker space so you couldn't use it outside unless your workout was at like sunset yeah but it would be cooler which would be nice yeah once you kind of figure out like <laughs> that stuff then everything else kind of falls away. <laughs> sorry i keep coughing ever since we got back i've been sick i need to add more of those shakeology boosts to my drinks <laughs> All right. Any other questions? Is there anything you want to add? No, yeah, that was awesome. You did great, man. That's it. That's everything. Rock and roll. <laughs> Wednesday. Oh my gosh. Well, you guys will have to update us on like you know if you find a place and when you're thinking about doing it. Um, I want to say ours were always on like Tuesday nights at seven. Do they still run those? Does she still run it around so. here? Do you know, and somebody messaged me because we had 412 Fit Club and 724 Fit Club. Mm -hmm. And somebody messaged me if they could take over 412. And I'm like, well, yeah, I don't live there. So I gave them that Facebook page. But I don't think it was in Heritage Creek. I should look it up. I should ask. I, I doubt that they still do it. Okay. Is anyone else, like, on this call from around Pittsburgh? I don't think so. No. Uh, just make sure. <laughs> Rachel, where are you from? I forget. North Carolina. Oh, okay. okay. I'm pretty sure there are some fit clubs in North Carolina. Yeah, I know there's one in Charlotte and in Asheville. So I, I would like to go like visit and go just like check it out. Mm. And I have friends in Charlotte and Asheville, so that's awesome. Uh, yeah. 
Sorry. I have a friend who just moved to Asheville. I'll tell her about you. <laughs> Is she a coach? No, she's not a coach yet. Uh oh, not yet. Honestly. Yeah. <laughs> when she starts seeing both their new feeds. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, I think, um, and we would put our fit club on meetup.com. That, of course, costs money, but then just Facebook. I mean, it's hard because when you're Googling to try to find the, a local fit club, unless they're on, I think there's a Beachbody listing. That used to use that. They kind of went away from it. Yeah, I don't remember. You kind of have to Google. That's the hardest thing, though, is like getting the word out. So any way that you can do it, like I was saying, Starbucks or anything local or – um, what else do we do in the community Heritage Creek they actually put it in their newsletter which was awesome okay so just I don't know I'm like just Craigslist like all the free stuff <laughs> just as much free stuff as you can <laughs> alright ladies well right. there's no more questions we'll go ahead and, and call it a night okay right. okay thank Bye. you Bye. 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 Bye.